I'm Dr. Chris Hickman and my business is Hickman Mobile Veterinary Services and what I provide is in-home end-of-life care for pets. Okay, so I've lived in Rockcliffe Smythe for two years now and I enjoy it because it's quite spacious. I have lots of birds in my backyard. I love Smythe Park because it's its own little ecological or ecosystem there and um, I enjoy going down there and looking at all the birds and the turtles and the ducks. So I graduated from the Ontario Veterinary College in 1988 and I've been practicing in various um, practices since then, small animals, emergency medicine and now I do um, in-home end-of-life care. I wanted to be a vet from the time I was seven years old and I just became a veterinarian and was always focused on that. And now I really enjoy providing um, help and in-home in help to geriatric patients and patients who are suffering from terminal illnesses so that the family can provide the care that that pet needs through the journey of death. And then I also help the, uh, the, pa the clients through that journey so that at the end it's the best experience that both their pet and they can have for a very hard and painful time. So I offer in-home um, assessments, quality of life assessments, and then we set up a treatment plan to provide not a cure for the disease, but comfort. So cure is comfort beyond cure, so that we can make the end of life uh, a meaningful journey for both the pet and their owners. I started this um, particular area um, I started my business three years ago because I felt that there was a need for um, an interim period in life where you don't have to do um, excessive um, procedures, treatments, but you don't have to euthanize them right away either. Mm -hmm. So what we do is there's that little time when on their journey toward death, like their fifth stage of life almost, where we make them comfortable, we keep them at home, and people can grieve the loss, they can spend treasured time with that pet, so that when death comes, either naturally sometimes or by euthanasia, um, they feel that they've done everything for their pet, they aren't left with this um, stress that they've made a rash decision quickly um, and they're supported so that they can look back and it's not the worst day of their life. You know, we made it and they don't look back later in several years down the road and regret decisions they've made. So we go through treatment plans and end of life plans and what what do you want this journey to be for you and your pet. And that way we can make it a beautiful journey, um, honor that pet, and it's a gift that the client or the owner is giving to that pet who has given them so many gifts before. We believe that animals are sentient beings, they have feelings, they have emotions, and we know that. And so when they're dying, they deserve respect, they deserve um, all those needs to be met. And I think their emotional needs and their mental health needs are met when they're in their home so that they're surrounded by loved ones and they don't feel as stressed and everyone's more comfortable and they can take a big breath and just think, oh, okay, we're taking this journey and it's gonna be as beautiful and as comforting as we can make it for everyone involved. One of the very difficult parts is when I have to go to a home and do in-home hospice or euthanasia on a young pet. Um, and that is really difficult because it's difficult for the owners because they've just gotten this pet. I had one kitten that I'd actually given to a friend and she developed severe cancer when she was 14 months old. And so this is the time of life she should be getting into trouble and causing mischief and running around and instead she was dying and we had to humanely euthanize her and I think that is a very difficult, that would be one of my most difficult situations where a pet is very young, hasn't really lived a good long life, but they have to be, um, the end of their journey is now and we have to help them with that. And my two cats, they're brothers, Link and Dorf, they are two years old as well and they have disappeared and I cannot find them, but they'll show up eventually. Hi Sprout! This is Sprout. He's five months old and he's a Chihuahua cross with a Fox Terrier. All right, sorry Drizzer. All right, this is Drizzy and he's a bearded dragon and he's two years old. 